This is the worst reviewed car in America. It's called the VinFest V8. A few months ago, we drove it and did not like it. It's not a great ride. The turning radius is awful. This car is giving me a tip. VinFest saw that video and slid into our DM saying, hey, we fixed those problems you guys had. Can we try again? So today we are gonna review the VinFest one more time to see if they were able to fix the worst reviewed car of 2023. Welcome, Welcome to, to Donut. Donut. Now, when we first tested the VF8, we wanted to see if some complaints auto journalists made were legit. And to VinFast credit, some criticisms were a tad overblown. Battery failure. But others were downright dangerous. Oh my what God. The? If you don't have your blinker on, you can't switch lanes. And when VinFast hit us up saying, hey, we fixed a bunch of issues you guys had in less than five months, no less, we were pretty blown away. How could a company that only started making cars five years ago have enough infrastructure to fix a car as poorly built as the VF8? Was VinFast just blowing smoke up our ass? Well, this unit right here just got to the States from Vietnam a week ago, so we're gonna be putting this thing back on the streets, testing it from its most annoying problems to its most dangerous ones. Let's hit the road, James. I already hate it. Why is that? I don't know. See, my... That was your fault. My no. opinion might be tainted. I'm going to go ahead and admit that okay. I had a very bad experience with this car. So it's coming from a place of not zero. Why are we still wearing helmets? I don't know. So if you don't know, the VinFast VF8 is an electric SUV manufactured in Vietnam. This specific model is the VF8 Plus, and it retails for about $52,000, which ain't necessarily cheap, but it is around the same price as a top trim Tesla Model Y. James and I both agree it's exciting that a country like Vietnam is entering the fray, because more competition apparently means better cars, or something like that. One of the biggest problems we had with the VinFast last time we drove it was the chimes. That's seven, eight, nine, ten, so many noises. <laughs> The VinFast VF8 is covered in sensors that are constantly monitoring the car. Let you know, hey, there's a guy back yeah. there. And they would not shut the f up. Just what? Shut up! <laughs> so we're gonna be monitoring the number of chimes that we hear on our drive today. James, I haven't heard one. I heard one. One. I don't know what it's for. Wait, we I'm do there. have what looks like some sort of alert on our thing. We'll check that out. But one chime so far, we've been in the car for 20 minutes. That's a huge improvement already. Huge improvement. I do not know what the chime was for. Unclear. I don't like a nebulous chime. No, don't just tell me something's wrong. No. Something's wrong. <laughs> <laughs> so it seems like VinFest has heard people's complaints. They told me that the previous car's software was overly sensitive and that all they had to do to fix this issue was a basic software update. And it seems like it worked. Last time the car had anxiety, everything right, was setting yeah. it off. Now it's, it feels like it's taking a Prozac, it's chilling. Next, we're facing one of the biggest problems of the VF8, the ride quality. Last time we drove this car, James and I both felt sick after driving for just an hour because the car was insanely bouncy down the road. I'm a little nauseous, dude. Unfortunately, there isn't an over-the-air update in the world that can fix physics. This suspension issue can only be solved on the assembly line. But lucky for us, VinFast says they revised the suspension with new spring rates, different dampers, and some other changes. Theoretically, these changes should make the car drive more smoothly over bumps and increase confidence. Let's see if it works. Hey guys, Jeremiah here. Sorry to interrupt, but I wanna tell you, I'm getting old. I'm almost 25 years old. Anyways, some nights I get home from the garage and I find it hard to sleep because I feel sore all over. Well, guess what? Oh, this beauty right here, the pod cover from today's sponsor, Eight Sleep, is a lifesaver. It heats up or cools down depending on what I need. And let me tell you, it is friggin' sweet. It can get as cold as 55 degrees to as hot as 110 degrees. The entire thing runs on this pod right here. Look at that thing. Computer next to your bed, pretty cool. You just add in some water and the pod pumps it through these hoses just under the mattress cover. What's really cool is this thing has dual temperature control. So half the bed can be cold and the other half can be hot. I'll admit I've sometimes left one side colder for my dog because he loves this thing as much as me. I sleep with my dog. 
okay, I'm a sad person. <laughs> Everything is controlled on the 8 Sleep app. See, you can track sleep and health data, have a wake you up, which is wild, and a bunch of other cool stuff. 8 Sleep currently ships to the US, Canada, the UK, the EU, and Australia. So if you wanna invest in quality sleep that actually helps your body, then check out the pod cover by 8 Sleep. All you gotta do is just click the link below to learn more. Now, you can go back to the video. I'm gonna go back to bed. Okay, good night. Come on, Jerry. Hey, go to sleep. Mm. Okay, James, our producer has alerted us that there's some big speed bumps coming up that we're gonna test the suspension on. It's in normal mode, here we go. It's a little bouncy. It did bounce in the rear a little bit. Yeah. Improvement, yes. Perfect, no. Nah. VinFast apparently has actually replaced both the shocks and the springs on the VinFast. And some of the suspension, can put, like the arms and stuff, they've revised. And so like they actually went in and replaced parts of the car. This isn't just a software update. Yeah. And I uh, think it worked. They did a, a good job. Now, again, not Lexus level. No. It's not a Bentley. No. But for an economy EV CUV, rides fine because it feels the way it does and it looks the way it does and it's the size that it is like i associate this car with like the thirty-five thousand dollar segment mm -hmm. that's a problem. i just want to keep reminding yeah. everybody including ourselves that this thing costs fifty-three thousand dollars yeah. 528 as tested yeah. it's competing with the model y with the nissan aria uh the hyundai ionic well, it's in that price range and i think a few of those cars have things like the fast charging, better uh, handling, uh, faster, you know? And I think that's a big problem for this car. So it seems like the suspension is definitely better, but how does it compare to one of the most popular EVs in America? The Model Y. We are now in the gold standard CUV EV, the Tesla Model Y, and personal opinions aside, people love these things. Especially in LA. Especially in LA. After driving the BF8, and now that I'm in a Tesla, I saw another Tesla guy, and at least I felt like I was part of something. <laughs> so we're comparing these two cars, not because this one is really good, but this one's kind of the standard, and it also sucks. Oh, mirrors aren't enough? You gotta have a camera there too, like I showing you. Yeah, you. <laughs> Although that is kind of that's kind of sick. But like, that. who's looking at me? I love it. This is this just drives so much it's better. It's a lot better. This is just a way better car than the. We came in a little hot, but it it's a lot better. Same price. Great car. <laughs> Great car. The future. If this is the future, I can't wait. God, it's, it's fast. It's pretty quick. Yeah, and that's one thing this has over the VF8 for sure. Yeah. This thing is quick it's AF. got that. And at the end of the day, you can hate everything about it, but the fact that it's quick could make up for it for you. Yeah, maybe. Not me. I think the ride quality of this is better. Yeah. But to be fair, this is a car that's been out a lot longer. And mm. I think what we are seeing with the VF8 and we have seen with Tesla historically is that they release their cars, not like cars, but more like tech, where they yes. give something to the public that's not 100% there, and then they use public feedback as a stage of development. Yeah. One thing that this car definitely doesn't have that the VinFast does is laggy acceleration. Sorry. <laughs> One of the weirder problems we ran into when we first drove the VF8 is the laggy accelerator pedal. That is weird. You're jamming on that accelerator and nothing's happening. Now, there are some logical reasons for having a laggy pedal. In gas-powered cars, manufacturers dull throttle response to save gas. In an EV, I guess the case could be made that having tons of instant torque on tap might not be the safest thing for a driver who's not used to it. Then again, if a car doesn't react how you expect it, that could be dangerous too. Regardless, it was annoying, and I want to know if they fixed it. One of the positives of EVs on a twisty road like the one that we're on is that you can get out of corners a lot faster because of that immediate electric torque, theoretically. I'm interested to see how the pedal feels up here at the crest. There's still a lag in this car, but it's yeah. probably like half as long mm -hmm. now. 
It's only half a second. <laughs> it's only half a second. It's annoying, but it's not. I wouldn't say it's egregious, though. No, no. It, before it was comical, and now it's not. Yeah. The last time we tested it, the most dangerous parts of the VinFast VF8 were the driving aids. The blind spot monitoring was totally wrong about cars being in your blind spot. Not on, not on, not on. There's a Mustang coming up. Yeah. On. That's not good. And the car didn't let you change lanes unless you used the blinker. Oh, oh my what God. The you don't have your blinker on, you can't switch lanes. No way. Yeah. Do it again. <laughs> Look, I'm an overly cautious guy, but even that is too far. So how does it feel now? Uh, what's going on? Lane departure indicator thing is inconsistent. Still. Still, man. It's off, it seems it's like off. something on. Now it's on, the car's in your blind spot, but yeah, I mean, it just seems like something that should be easier to nail. Try turning on the blinker with a car next to us and see if it does. Well, it is the. Apparent. No, 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 nothing. Weird. Nothing. And there's a car right next to us. Yeah. Vinfast. What are we doing, man? Yeah, that's a thing. Like again, not proprietary tech. Oh yeah, James. Let's see if it can switch lanes without uh, you telling it you want it to. All right. Yeah. Okay. Ah! I'm it allowed to switch. It allows me to switch lanes. That's great. No. I don't is there any resistance in the steering wheel? Something just happened. It just shimmied a little bit. Mm. It did shimmy. It shimmies. But like when we drove it last time, it really it, it locked you back. It put you back. It's like, no, get back. So the lane. shimmy, I think, is there to just alert me like, hey, you're mm -hmm. veering into another lane. Are you asleep? Wake up. I don't mind that at all, especially when comparing it to the violent oh, yank. Man. Yeah. That was present. It was before. dangerous. It gave me flashbacks to my dad teaching me how to drive. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> so it does seem like VinFast has fixed a lot of the issues with the previous version of the VF8. And on a timeline, that's pretty incredible. They clearly have the means to pump out updates both on the software and the hardware side of things pretty quickly. So we have to give them credit where credit is due. But I still feel like this car came out way too soon. This is like the car we should have driven back then like they just went into production this is what the car should feel like that was like a prototype prototype that we drove back mm -hmm. then it wasn't a prototype prototype it felt like a <laughs> it prototype, felt like a prototype, prototype but, but that was owned by a person yes I, I can't shake the feeling that it's still only like 85 or 90 percent there yeah i literally just caught myself thinking well it's hard to make a car. <laughs> it is. They did a better job than I could have. <laughs> like, like, that's not. You don't have, just because it's hard to do something doesn't make an excuse. It's like if you're a company that makes it and charges for it. If you make it and just give it to people, then I'll be like, oh, okay. Yeah. I mean, you know, beggars can't be choosers. Yeah. But if you're selling it for 55 grand, then it should be good. Maybe this is just gonna be the sales model for cars now, kind of like video games. The consumer becomes part of the R&D process, which I really don't love. But VinFast is making attempts to fix their mistakes. So, Nolan, this thing used to be the worst car we've ever driven. It made us angry. Months later, they've done a lot of software changes, a lot of hardware changes. They have improved it. Mm -hmm. Did they fix the worst reviewed car in America? I mean, I, yeah. Yeah, I think that they did fix it. Yeah. But unfortunately, it's still not very good. <laughs> I think they made it about as good as it could be. There's no egregious, like, faults. No. It needs an identity. It needs that signature feature that differentiates it from the rest of the competition. VinFast needs to find who they are and who they're selling to. Thank you guys so much for watching this video and everything else on Donut. Get yourself some donut gear at any Zoomies in North America or Blue Tomato in Europe. <laughs> I love you. <laughs>